Hey guys, how's it going? So we're out working on a couple of projects today. I am going to be transplanting some boxwoods and Erin is going to be working on the soil in the pumpkin area. So here is the glorious Hartley. This is the area where we're going to be working. I'm going to dig up all of these boxwoods. This is where the pergola once was and I had planted these boxwoods, oh geez, I don't know, a few years ago. They're looking really good, but since Chad is going to be coming and getting this concrete pad and pulling it up as well as this little sidewalk randomness that I'm standing on, like <laughs> so randomly shaped, I don't know. He's going to come get this, uh, so I want these to be out of his way and I want to utilize these in the big pots along our fence line. I was thinking about what we could do in those pots along the fence line this year that was maybe a little different from last year. And I loved them last year. It was the first time we had anything winter-esque going on out there. We went up to the hills and got red twig dogwood branches and then I ordered in a bunch of greens and holly and things like that and it was, they were gorgeous. But I like to change it up a little bit and I thought, well, these boxwoods have to move anyway, so why don't we just dig them up and try them in those pots? And if they thrive and survive the winter, we'll probably just use them as an evergreen centerpiece throughout next season just for a different change up a different look now I did not trim these when I trimmed all the rest of the boxwoods because I was kind of unsure as to what I was gonna do with them so I may tighten them up just a little bit um, just so that they're not wooly and there's Russell hey buddy Russell kitty come here kitty kitty hey buddy and they look pretty clean, which is nice. I noticed a couple of them have spider mite damage. We have just been dealing with spider mites on the boxwoods horribly bad, and they make the boxwoods look pretty rough. Um, so I noticed that there's a little bit of damage maybe on two or three of them. We're gonna be spraying all of them. Uh, in fact, I think that's gonna be a project for next week. So we'll be doing one last spray for any um, like eggs that are left over uh, so that those don't overwinter hopefully and then we'll start in with a preventative spray regimen next spring so hopefully we can rebound the boxwoods that are looking really rough and then prevent any of the good ones from starting to look bad and so this is what happens see how it looks kind of speckled instead of like glossy green like this one looks pretty good I don't see really a whole lot of issues going on on these over here but just really close by which makes me kind of nervous for the other ones you can see how they get kind of a whitish, yellow, kind of mottled appearance. That's from where spider mites, they hang out on the undersides of the leaves and they suck the sap from leaves, which is what gives them that speckled look because they're just sucking that, the juices right out of them. Um, and you know, if you get a really severe problem, they can take your plant. I mean, they can really do a lot of damage. These boxwoods right here are winter gems and I have 11 of them right here. I've got 14 pots along the fence line. We are going to probably be eliminating three or four of those pots next year um, as we incorporate that triangular shaped garden out in the driveway into the back formal garden. I know there's a lot of moving around in this garden right now, but, um, but for the time being, I do have three sprinter boxwoods nearby and because these pots are far enough apart, I might just go ahead and use the sprinters even though they have kind of a different look. So winter gems here and then the three sprinters are right over here and these have to move as well. They're about the same size, so I feel like we'll be okay using them. Gosh, just look at that iceberg rose. I wanted to come over and show you the pots real quick, but boy, that st stops me in my tracks. Iceberg climbing rose and then the gara back there. Jeez, Louise, that looks good now. So real quick, here are the pots. There are five right here, the rest spanning down to the mulberry tree there. We had unplugged pink salvia, Supertunia Vista bubblegum, and Superbena sparkling rose in these containers. In the end, the Supertunia Vista bubblegum, I mean, if you've ever grown it, you know that it's kind of a, it's kind of a bully and it takes over. It's awesome. It's one of the most awesome annuals. If you want something that you know will perform, like without a doubt, uh, Supertunia Vista bubblegum is the one you should plant. But this Superbena sparkling rose kept up. I was impressed with that plant, but it was so similar in color that unless you got really close to the flower, and really started studying them, you didn't really notice the difference between the two, even though like you could see both of them in each container. The salvia did not keep up. It just doesn't have the same vigor as the other two. So anyway, it was pretty much buried in most of the pots. But I learn every single year about different growth rates, how things cohabitate or not together. Um, it's all fun for me. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of explain what we're doing back here. I just showed you in the boxwood video, this triangular shaped garden. It's awkward because our driveway actually, you need to drive uh, in a curve in order to get around. This really just goes nowhere. It goes straight and then back around the backside of this garden. But if you didn't know to go left, 
like you would just naturally think I need to still keep going forward, you know? So it's a little confusing for people who come through here. So we were thinking of taking off, I think from this post and going like this, getting rid of all the gravel and pots right here, creating a garden here and then curving it from the tip of the box that's over there over to about the arb. So that all of this will be garden with no gravel, no driveway looking areas, so as not to confuse everybody. Anyway, that's why I'm really not concerned with having the boxwoods be the same exact variety because these will likely be located somewhere else next year. Uh, so they'll be separated in the end and they're far enough apart. I think they're about, oh, I don't know, 15, 16 feet apart anyway, between pots. That's far enough apart to where you don't have them sitting next to each other so you can't really tell the difference. Supertunia Bordeaux still going for it and a lot of other things that need to be cut back. We'll probably come through and do a, a cleanup video here very soon. We've got geraniums and Veronica. Yeah, and the coleus next week will be gone because we're gonna have some high 20 temperatures. So those will get taken. Anyway, things are just starting to power down a little bit, but let's get these trimmed and dug out and see how they look in those pots. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love them so much. And given the fact that I bought these plants and planted them several years ago, it feels like a free plant. Like I have free boxwoods in these pots this fall, even though like they're not free, <laughs> but it feels that way. And I just am so happy to have a really effective way to use these rather than, you know, just plunking them out somewhere on the new property. Like these have a very distinct purpose. So they're all fairly similarly shaped, round-ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are some like, let me see, I think it was this one right here that kind of had an empty spot on the back. Yeah, you can kind of see it like it needs to fill in right there. But overall, they're all really nicely shaped, which is surprising to me. Because these were in varying light situations, like half of them, uh, when the pergola was up, were really shaded almost all the time. And one of the sides got um, sun in the morning. And then there was one that was planted right at the base of a Virginia creeper, like right up next to its trunk. It was really difficult actually to dig out. And that one was like smothered on one side. So the fact that they came out all looking so good is awesome. And the sprinters look great too. Two of them kind of had holes in the center where they were weighed down by snow that one year and still haven't recovered yet, but they look great. Just walking down the line here, the last three pots are sprinters. Now sprinters are just an improved version of winter jam. Um, so they're faster growing and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, yeah, winter jam, sprinter, can't really tell a huge difference. Can't see the holes in the last two because 
you're not looking at them from overhead like we were when they were planted in the ground. So like when we were looking at them from overhead, hole. And this one, hole. But you don't see that when they're up higher off the ground. Now you probably noticed that we did not swap the soil out, which is not typical of us. Typically we usually take all of the soil out and start brand new, but honestly the, um, the soil was pretty loose. It wasn't root bound with annuals, which is crazy. And that could be the fact that I didn't use a grass as a centerpiece. Usually when I use a grass, the whole thing comes out all in one big piece or a sweet potato vine, but I didn't use either of those. The other stuff that I used are fairly shallow rooted. So um, the roots that are visible were the ones left over from daffodils um, from last or from this spring. So anyway, we just decided to leave the bulk of it underneath. Um, I did top dress with fresh soil and I did put biotone starter fertilizer in there. So it kind of recharge uh, what's in there. Oops, I missed getting the drip in this one. Yeah, so they all have this drip tubing running in there, uh, which we don't have. We'll probably run it maybe for the next couple of weeks or something, let these plants um, kind of settle in, but then we'll turn it off for the winter. We don't do anything with it. It just stays just right there. Um, it should be fine. Now I do have some white cabbage and white pansies that I might pop in these pots or I might just leave them simple and clean. Um, I've got to count how many I actually have to see if I have enough. So I'm going to go ahead and water these in and then we'll go check in with Aaron who was mowing the lawn. I think he's almost done. It, it took me a little while. Digging those out is not an easy task, especially on half of them. The drip system was running. So all the soil around them was super wet and they were really heavy. Gosh, I wish you guys could just see this in person. <laughs> I always wish that. They look so impactful. They never look like that in the camera screen. Russell, what are you doing, buddy? All right, moving on to the second part, which we're actually gonna wait on. So you can see the pumpkin vine area right behind me. Uh, recently just got it all cleaned out. I can't even believe how much came out of this space. Over 500 pumpkins and squash, and I didn't even count how many melons came out of here, which was just so amazing. And at first I was kind of kicking myself. I did space them a little bit further than last year, but not very much, and they grew so crazy. It was hard to even see what was going on in here. You couldn't really walk through it. But I might keep planting that way, you guys, because, I mean, we get so much from the space. It's kind of worth it. You can see the planting sites here. And I do um, kind of zigzag so that they're a little bit staggered. It just worked out really well. Um, so, like, a lot of the branches are still in here. We'll go ahead and just till those in. But we decided to wait until we have um, grass clippings, leaves, things like that. We're just going to put all of that over the soil surface here and we may even just leave it all winter long and let it just kind of form a mat on top of the soil and then we'll till it in in the spring. We got ready to do it and we were like, why are we tilling? Like we're not tilling anything into this soil. So there's really not a huge point <laughs> in actually tilling it. Um, I do think we decided to do grass because the grass pathways are looking so great. Um, we are gonna start seeding the grass around the exterior here really soon. And I think we're gonna go ahead and put sprinklers on the interior as well, because I think we're going to do our vine crop plants a little bit different next year. So they're not going to be as much of a uh, issue spilling over the edges, uh, but we'll see what happens. But I'm really happy with what we got done today. I mean the boxwoods are just amazing in those pots. I love them so so much. Um, now I just have to figure out if I can plant them further with other annuals and things to to kind of uh, I don't know doll them up a little bit more. So anyway that's going to be it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.